Hey guys, hope you've had a fantastic week. Welcome to another edition of Side Chat with Nation. Um, on today's episode, you're going to be talking about athletes and branding. Apparently, not many athletes have quite understood the whole concept of branding themselves. This basically means that they're not getting sponsorships, um, endorsements for different brands that work within their sphere. I'm going to be joined today on the show with Ashley uh, Kotzin, who's the group CEO for Forward Zone, as we explore this topic and talk about some of the do's and don'ts when athletes want to brand themselves. What are some of the loopholes that you probably think um, athletes or sporting organizations overlook in the process of branding themselves? So I think I think you know if we if we if we start with the athletes per se, I think the athletes have to understand that they kind of have you know almost three silos to their career. You know the first oh. silos when they're starting off and they're building themselves up, they break into the team, they first become known. Then they go through a period where they do really well, they're incredibly well known, and life is really good because things are going well for them. But then there's always going to come a period of transition when they move away from being professional player to a non-professional player and they transition out of that. And I think often players don't think about those three different kind of stages of their careers well. And, and, and what, I, what I mean by that is you actually have to build a foundation because if you want to be successful post your career, during your career, you've got to do all the right things. Starts with number one, living a very clean and healthy lifestyle off the field. Um, so staying away with all the kind of negativities that you, you know you could bring yourself by, you know, getting involved in certain kind of scandals or or, or, or any kind of you know um, negative publicity for yourself. So you need to really keep yourself squeaky clean, right? Because ultimately, brands want to associate with clean brands. Otherwise, there's you know, always a challenge associated with that. So I always think that sometimes players don't think enough about their actions, you know, both on and off the field or on and off the pitch or on and off the courts. You know, I think that today to really have a, have a life beyond sports, you really need to build a very good career while you're playing. And that, you know, takes care of how you look after yourself, how you speak, um, how you look after brands that maybe you're involved with during uh, your club tenure. And I think also a, a loophole that I see a lot is players not thinking about life after football from an education perspective. So how can they build a skill set that when they finish football brands want to associate with them? So they're strong in computer literacy, they understand digital transformation, they understand how to manage their own digital assets or their social um, media platforms, uh, working out how they speak well or be presentable. Oh. Uh, can they work on issues of leadership or, or those kind of aspects? So I generally think the loophole sometimes is that they're not thinking beyond their career. You know, they're living in the now when it's going well and they're getting played and all's good. But I think the loophole needs to be as they start to need to think a little bit of a time horizon beyond because certainly brands are not going to be able to, to go after many players. So they're going to be pretty selective about who they take. And I think they're going to really do their homework or, or really do their due diligence around who is it they want to be associated with. And generally, those are players who have a good, clean career, had a very healthy lifestyle, both on and off the field, you know, single relationships, stayed away from, from alcohol, um, gaming, a lot of some of these things that, you know, sometimes they can get themselves into some trouble. Uh, multiple relationships that some of the football players are infamous for. So I think those are the kind of things that, and the loopholes that really need to protect against because ultimately we have one thing only and that's our name. And I think we really have to protect that if we want to really grow and develop and become a big brand. Our name is everything. Two things you mentioned there, um, education and athletes. And uh, the uh, maybe you can you can you can talk to us about uh, what it takes to what the process that it takes to brand an athlete because I'm pretty sure you worked with individuals who uh, probably coming from a point of zero to hero 
you know. So maybe you can uh, talk to me about that and also talk about the importance of education in sports because not many people take the whole issue of education and sport very seriously. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, just to, to, to start with that point, I think, you know, while athletes are playing, they get told where to be, what to wear, they get fed, their clothes get washed and they throw them on the floor. They're incredibly spoiled. And in essence, they don't have to do much, really have to wake up and go to sleep. The rest is almost taken care of. And I think during that time, they almost become lazy and don't feel they need to learn or grow or develop. And I think that's a problem. I think to, to build a skill set, you need to understand that there's a life beyond being looked after as a professional athlete. You know, there's lots of hard work to do. There's uh, lots of to-do lists to manage. You've got to build a, a reputation. You've got to find clients. You've got to look after clients. So I think that's like a skill set that they don't really look after themselves. And, and certainly, as, as you mentioned, what is the brand building process? So, so for me, it starts around the look, you know, how you look and how you manage yourself. And, and we talk about a few different areas that, that players or, you know, men and women need to think about. So firstly, when they um, are preparing themselves, let's say for an interview like something like this, which is visual. So, you know, have they dressed nicely? Have they brushed their hair? How, how are they looking? Because it's a visual experience um, as opposed to radio where maybe it's not visual, but the voice becomes so important and that people are listening very intently. So how you speak and the pace with which you speak and, and some of the language you use becomes important. And, and then if we move to say, a TV environment that's maybe live or, or you're in a particular panel, you need to be prepared. Have you done some of the pre-reading? Or, or have you asked maybe the presenter, can you give me an idea of what some of the questions may be? Because preparation is, is certainly one of the most important things. So I think, you know, generally getting match ready for all those different kind of media environment, whether it's a print interview article that you may have with a journalist, maybe it's a, a live Zoom or a live TV, maybe it's radio, just being prepared for that kind of conversation, arrive on time, always smile, um, you know, just so sometimes maybe they sound very basic, but you know, there, there's nothing better than being greeted with a good smile, uh, asking somebody their name, making eye contact or, or just really having a very kind of positive energy about yourself. You know, we always talk about how do you play a room? And I think that comes with a particular energy. It's how you talk. It's how you, you know, put yourself out there to the world. So I think that's important. Then we start to talk a lot to athletes today, how they manage their digital assets, which we spoke about a little bit earlier. So the social media platforms, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, whether they, you know, doing TikToks, what do their Facebook platforms look like? And then on all of those platforms, what are they displaying as photos, as logos, as colorways? Um, and then what are they posting? You know, sometimes players go to a party and they take silly photos of themselves uh, doing silly things. You have to be disciplined uh, and very deliberate about what you post, what you say, um, so there's actually such a wide range of elements uh, that are educationally driven to all of these things today, because, I mean, I think we live in such a digital, fast world that it's very hard to post something and then pull it back. You know, if you look at some yeah. of these big athletes, the Cristiano Ronaldo's, the LeBron James's, you know, uh, Megan Rapino, some of these big, you know, global sporting assets, they are followed by millions of people. So a photo you post now and it may be a, a, a silly image that you didn't want to get out there is out there. Um, so really brand building takes time and I think it takes a discipline, you know, so it's Iraq, what do you say and, and how do you say it and being authentic, you know, and then again, who are you following um, and who's following you? And, and most importantly, a, a big topic that we work on at the moment a lot with athletes is, is storytelling. You know, some athletes have an amazing story, come from a very poor background with a very big family, slept on the floor and, you know, encouraged or, or, or encountered tremendous amount of hardship to, to break into the professional world. How are they telling that story? How are they packaging it? How are they using that to be uh, inspirational mm -hmm. to, to younger players? How are they, you know, doing the right kind of thing by, by telling the story because ultimately that's motivational for so many. So I think brand building today has many layers. Um, I think sometimes players are not very open-minded to want to learn. 
And, 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 you know, I had this conversation in the week and sometimes I feel you've got to learn to learn, you know, and, and you've got to teach people to learn again. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, often when we're at school, we're in learning mode, we've got tests all the time and the teachers are pushing us. But when we finish, you know, how do we continue to learn? How do we continue to grow? And I find often that, that, that players are, are very reluctant to want to learn. They feel like they know it all. They're not very open-minded to, to gain new uh, information. So I, I really think an open-minded approach to wanting to learn is such an important point around this educational journey to brand development. Mm, okay. Uh, the other question I'd asked was, how important is it to combine sports and education? Because there are people who probably are in school, then opportunities come calling. They're like, we want you to play for this particular team. And then they're like, you know what? I don't really need to go back to school. You know, um, sports is what I've been called for. It's good to, you have the talent and everything, but why is it important to, you know, uh, kind of like strike a balance between the two? Or if you have the opportunity, then you go ahead with um, education. No, I just, I, I cannot... Um, underplay the importance of education. And, and I feel that in a lot of sporting organizations, I don't think teams place enough um, importance on encouraging players to want to study. I think that, that studying and education almost should be mandatory in some of the contracts and some of the younger players should be forced to do certain courses. or And even if it's short courses, you know, I understand that the players will say, I'm busy and I'm training and I don't really have time you can make time. And, and even if you do a short course, it's important. And um, I see the players that still want to, you know, learn more and develop more, certainly have um, a lot of wider intelligence in many areas. And generally, those are the kind of players that I find the brands go after. You know, in essence, they're a little bit more intelligent. They're a little bit worldly. They can, you know, speak on different topics. They've got an opinion on certain things. Um, and ultimately, I, I just think knowledge is power. You know, I think the more we learn and the more we can uh, empower ourselves, the better we'll become. So I, I think, and I think you're right. I think a lot of players think, now I'm a professional footballer now. What do I need to learn for? But, you know, you, you need sometimes to be told. And sometimes, you know, that's got to be come from the club, I think. You know, maybe even from the coach or the CEO or whoever it is. I think that those, those kind of people in those clubs, I think, have responsibility to the players to force them to learn and to grow and to develop. Because what happens um, is what we touched on in the early part of our conversation is that when they finish and when that professional music stops, you can't dance no longer. And yeah. as a result, it's a very lonely place. You've got very little skill. And, and, and I see a lot of players almost, you know, getting very depressed. Um, and, and I mean, there's so many stories globally of players who end playing sport broke, mm. they've got no money and they've got no yeah. skill. And then what happens to them, you know? So, and, and it's quite interesting because I, I follow this a lot like on global trends and, and I find that um, certain countries are very good at encouraging um, education and preparation for, for life beyond football, almost like transitional training because there's a very, very deep darkness and silence that falls on a lot of athletes when they finish playing. And um, I think that many are not prepared for that, which, you know, almost leads to depression, you know, suicide. I mean, I think there's some really, really, you know, very sad stories out there of many athletes that um, have not really prepared for, for life beyond football. So, yeah, I, I think it's something I'm certainly seeing more and more uh, of a need from uh, myself, certainly just to, to talk about more and to encourage more because, I think you can just never know enough and you can never study enough. You know, that, that's certainly um, a big, you know, personal um, principle that I live by at the moment around executive education just should never stop. Not all the athletes have got it wrong in terms of branding themselves. I got time to talk to Ronald Rokoff, who's a former player for Sofapaka and currently runs his own sports academy, that is RO Sports Academy, as he talks to us about some of the things that have basically worked for him in terms of branding. Where do you think athletes go wrong with that particular aspect of sports? Uh, good question, good question. I think having played football for the last a couple of years, I think uh, 13 years, both at the lower tiers and also at the top level. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that uh, 
uh, locally, we local athletes, we actually don't really, you know, uh, want to consider ourselves as brands. Uh, most of the times, we always just think football is about, or maybe being an athlete is just about uh, going into the going into the field and performing into the field and beyond the field, uh, you know, whatever goes on outside the field, uh, probably it's not a, none of business. And I think it's something that most of us at least we've taken uh, for granted. Uh, but uh, we are we are looking at a new breed of uh, you know a new generation of athletes who are a new generation of footballers who are actually realizing the important the importance of packaging, branding and packaging. And I think as an athlete, that's one aspect uh, whereby uh, most of us, or maybe uh, let me say most local athletes, actually haven't really tapped into that. And if you look at uh, you know football or maybe look at sports on a different angle, actually realize there are a lot of opportunities that exist outside the football field or maybe outside the, you know uh, the, 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 the the sports let, let me say outside the the action the, the, the action guard maybe you know uh, the, the field or maybe you know the arena and all that a lot of opportunities really exist uh, within the football or maybe the sports ecosystem that if at all you brand yourself and you package yourself properly as an athlete you're bound to be there and I think uh, that's the it's a huge gap that uh, we actually really haven't really tapped into uh, appropriately and hopefully maybe in the next in the near future something that most local athletes will be looking into okay most people are talking about athletes and branding may be tempted to blame the athletes for not you know putting themselves out there okay. but the reality is they're usually under a governing body that is supposed to be giving them um, instructions or sort of code of conduct in terms of how they can put themselves out there You've been there as a player. Now you're running. You're running a, your own sports academy that is Arrow Sports Academy. What do you think the governing bodies that uh, manage athletes can do to ensure that athletes can be the, the the whole idea of considering yourself as brand can be reinforced on them earlier on in their careers? Uh, well, uh, first of all, even before we go to the you know. Uh, uh, the management companies or maybe uh, the guys who are who should be taking that task maybe manage the speech i think first of all it starts with the athletes themselves uh, because you you're not you you'll not be able to convince someone who re- who's not ready to package himself or maybe herself as a professional mm-hmm. and maybe convince him uh, that you need to do one two three things in order for you to uh, package yourself as a professional so i think uh, the mantra first starts with the athletes or maybe with the former athletes are we ready to you know change our ways are we ready to uh, twist one, two, three things so that you know we can package ourselves properly as an athlete. Because at the moment, uh, you find that uh, it's something that I've tried with my organization, Road to Goals organization. I've tried working with a couple of athletes, you know, to just try and you know uh, package them in a proper way whereby you know uh, we can leverage them in you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a in a market whereby you know somebody can look at them and you know realize this is actually professional athlete. And sometimes it's hard because first of all the commitment. Uh, the attitude is lacking. So before you even go to the management company, first of all, to me, my challenge is back to the athlete because branding and packaging is quite an important aspect of an athlete's life. If I told you want to be seen as a serious athlete, if I told you want to get opportunities on and off the field, uh, first of all, we must realize that we are our own brand. Right. That is the first mantra. We as athletes, the ball, you know, the, the back starts with that as athletes. We must realize that we are our own brand first. Before we must look at ourselves as brands in the first place, you know, because before you know, before you start marketing yourself as a as an athlete, first of all, you view yourself as an athlete. You must realize that you are a brand, and the moment we start looking at ourselves as professionals, probably somebody else will start looking at us as a professional athlete. Mm-hmm. But there's no way we can look at ourselves as a, as a, as a you know, so we are not really taking branding seriously as an athlete and you expect somebody else to look at you as a professional mm-hmm. and I think uh, it's a big challenge but other, having said that uh, we have uh, quite uh, you know guys uh, who are trying to help athletes in terms of uh, handling the social media you know uh, looking at the, working with their brand the, the image and everything and I think it's something that is commendable and it's all about just picking in the right athletes that you want to work with and just sharing them that dream with sharing them sharing with them your dream maybe your goals as maybe a manager, a seat manager or something like that, or maybe an seat uh, company, and hopefully just working with this seat to this part. But again, the biggest challenge actually, we local athletes, we are not really ready to uh, tap into uh, uh, this uh, uh, 
quite an important topic because most of us, you, you find that even athletes look at Facebook as <laughs> just mm-hmm. a luxury. They look at looking at social social uh, you know social the social media or maybe the uh, social sites and all that as something that you know they, they can do without. And if you look at an example like myself, I think uh, social media has really helped me a lot in terms of how I've been you know packaging myself from like a professional and all that. A lot of opportunities have come my way, and it's through social media and everything. So some of these things you don't have to wait for somebody to manage you, or you don't have to wait for somebody to show you the way. It actually starts with you because. An example like myself, I do everything on my own, from <laughs> designing everything, just, you know, I handle everything on my own, I think it's been working for me, so if I told it's been working for me, then I'm sure it's going to happen to somebody else.